Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today is June 2nd, 2023, and today we're gonna talk about, yet again, family reunification. Specifically the I-130, and trying to estimate how long, approximately, your I-130, your family reunification process, is going to take. Now, for the purposes of this video, as always, I will use the USAS, which is the official government website for US Citizenship and Immigration Services, and of course, the visa bulletin from the Department of State. In this video, I will show you the easiest way to read the visa bulletin, the easiest way to come up with these rough estimates, but keep in mind that they are still rough estimates and things do change as we go that's why it is important to keep monitoring uh, the visa bulletin keep monitoring the processing times with usas on this uh, youtube channel uh, every time the new visa bulletin comes out i do a, vi a video specifically on the new visa bulletin comparing it to the old ones and discuss what changed or not so if you're not subscribed to this channel yet make sure to subscribe before beginning i'm going to mention that i am not an immigration attorney this is not a legal advice all the information provided in these videos on this channel are directly from official government sources like usas and of course um, the department of state so let's start with the easiest way if you have not started your case yet if uh, you are just planning to start the your i-130 and you want to see approximately how long how much of the backlog there is how long before your relative your beneficiary will be waiting for the availability of that immigrant visa and again, these are the categories that we're talking about. They are the categories that are dealing with the backlog. These are not the immediate relative category. We will talk about the immediate relative category in these videos too, but this is more for those people that will be dealing with the backlog. And in order fi to find out, that's the very first thing that you want to concentrate on. You want to find out which category you will be dealing with, because depending on which category you're dealing with is the amount of backlog will depend on that. So right now in front of me, I have the page on travel.state.gov, official government website from the Department of State, specifically for the Bureau of Consular Affairs, Visa Bulletin, the most recent one for June 2023. You can find this link in the description of this video. So click on that link, scroll down just a little bit, and you will see almost at the very beginning of the page, family sponsored, not the whole thing, family sponsored preferences right here. So these are the categories that are, there are four of them. There are four different preference categories that are dealing with the backlog. There is first preference category, unmarried sons and daughters of US citizens that are over 21. It doesn't say here over 21, but these are F1 over 21, because if it is, if your daughter or son, if you're a US citizen and you're petitioning for your son or daughter, under 21 then it will be an immediate relative category so you will not be dealing with a backlog at all this is only for those over 21 then there's the second preference categories with two subcategories f2a spouses and children of permanent residents children keep in mind under 21 again doesn't say here but this is under 21 and then the f2b unmarried sons and daughters 21 years of age or older of permanent residents Again, unmarried sons and daughters. Now there's a third preference category, which is married sons and daughters of US citizens, not permanent residents, citizens. And then the fourth preference category, brothers and sisters of adult US citizens. So the siblings of US citizens. So these are the four preference categories. So again, if you are petitioning, if you are a US citizen, petitioning for a child under 21 or petitioning for your spouse, it's an immediate relative category. You are not dealing with the visa bulletin at all. We will talk about the rough estimates for those categories, but you are not dealing with the visa bulletin because visa bulletin is only for those that will be waiting for the availability of immigrant visa. In immediate relative categories, once your case is approved by USAS, the immigrant visa is immediately available. So once you are done with the documentary qualification or you know, documentary qualification, process at the NVC. Once you go, you know, once all of this is done, you go through the interview as soon as it is, you know, available, as soon as there is an available slot for an interview, you go through the interview, you get the immigrant visa. So it is the spouses of US citizens. It's children under 21 
of US citizens and it is parents of US citizens that are in immediate relative category. Keep that in mind. We will probably come back to this uh, later in the video, but for now, let's uh, let's deal with uh, with the visa bulletin so I can show you the easiest way to estimate if you have not started the case. So for this example, let's say that you are a US citizen and you are planning to invite to petition for your brother to reunify with your brother. So you know that you, your brother is going to be in force preference category. You will definitely be dealing with the visa backlog. How do we estimate how long it's going to take? The easiest way that I have found out and I have been dealing with the Visa Bulletin for quite a long time. If you have been subscribed to this channel, you know that I've been dealing with it for over two years now. And every time I deal with it, I try to find the easiest, the easier and easier and easier way. And so far, this is the easiest one I found. If you just want to quickly take a glance at it and say, okay, it's going to take approximately this much time. This is the easiest way to do it. So you find out your force, you know, your, your preference category in our example is going to be force preference category. You will scroll down to graph A right there. This is it. This is the only thing you need. You don't need to deal with anything else in this example for the visa bulletin. If you just want to find out the overall approximate amount of time, how long your case is going to take before, before the immigrant visa becomes available. So graph A, final action dates for family sponsor preference cases. We go down all the way to F4. And for now, let's think that this is all chargeability area. And I will explain briefly the chargeability areas. So right now it is showing April 2007. What it means is that the people that have petitioned back, that have submitted their I-130s back in April 2007 are just now, as of June 2023, getting their immigrant visas. Their immigrant visas are becoming available, which means that there is a backlog of April 2007 and we are in June 2023, so roughly 16, 16 years. My math is horrible, sorry about that. 16 years, roughly 16 years. And that's really it. This is your rough estimate. Roughly about 16 years. If you petition as a US citizen for your brother or your sister today, roughly you will be waiting for the availability of the immigrant visa for 16 years. This is very rough estimate because things might slow down. Backlog only keeps growing, unfortunately. But there is, a, there is always a, a possibility that Department of State, Department of Homeland Security, USAS, whoever in whoever is involved in the process will come up with some kind of streamlined uh, way of processing these applications or maybe increase the cap on this on the availability of the immigrant visas and things will speed up. That would be great. But as of right now, that's it. At one glance, you can take a look and that's really it. You, you are able to give yourself a rough estimate if you have not even started the case yet. Now, very briefly, chargeability areas. What are the chargeability areas? So all of the countries in the world are, will be in all chargeability area right here, this very first column right here, except for China, India, Mexico, and Philippines. So if you are petitioning for your brother and your brother is... In Philippines then you're not looking at all chargeability area right here you're looking right here and here as you can see it is different for some of the categories for some of the chargeability areas it is the same as all chargeability but for some of them it is different so again unless you are you know your your relative that you're petitioning for from China from India from Mexico or from Philippines then you're going to be in all chargeability area. That's really it. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, let's talk about the different stages of the I-130. And here we can talk about the um, immediate relative categories as well. Let's say you are petitioning, you are a US citizen and you are petitioning for your spouse. So you will not be dealing with the backlog, but you will still be dealing with some time um, that, you know, that is required for all the administrative processing, for all the application and stuff like this. Uh, how do you find out? How do you come up with the rough estimate? Okay, now we're gonna go to the USAS. And here we will talk about 
immediate relative categories and also the separate stage even if you are dealing with the backlog you will still be dealing with USCS because that's where you start your I-130 and if you are not familiar with the application with the petition I-130 itself I do have a separate video on this channel specifically on how to apply how to start the family reunification process check it out it is on this channel it's called I-130 petition for alien relative and how to you know fill it out all the links or everything is there so let's estimate now the um, well we don't really estimate but it kind of gives us the idea of how long the first stage of the petition for alien relative will take and it's it starts with USAS so that's where we start looking at the timeline we're gonna go to tools this is the USAS official government website you can find the link in the description below we're gonna go to tools here at the very top of the navigation menu and then we'll scroll down you can find it in different ways but I go to case status online that's where I go to and then you scroll down and you will see USAS processing times information again you can find this page a few different ways but this is the way I I'm used to finding so in this form right here we will select I-130 petition for alien relative now depending on which category depending on how you're applying for it you will select a different thing so for example let's start with our initial example US citizen petitioning for brother that would be forced preference category scrolling all the way down here there is US citizen filing for a brother or sister you will be dealing with the backlog you already know that roughly it's going to be 16 years that you will be waiting however let's find out now the stage with USAS how long the case will be sitting with USAS so you selected everything another thing it will depend on is which service center your application will be processed in depending on which state you live in and you submit your petition from which state it will go to a certain service center so for example let's say you are filing the petition from Florida if I'm not they don't take this as a fact but I'm pretty sure if you're petitioning from Florida if you live in Florida then your case is going to Texas again things might have changed I might be wrong but let's say your service center is Texas let's see how long approximately it takes to process in Texas processing time there we go so 43 and a half months uh, and that's again it's 80 percent of the cases which means that 20 percent of the cases are processed either faster or slower than this but roughly you have about four years well a little bit less than four years like three and a half years roughly about three and a half years for processing with USCIS again it is part of those 16 years it is not on top of the 16 years so it's not 16 years plus three and a half years it is three and a half years within those 16 years but it's good to know how long each stage of the process will take now this is again for someone who is dealing with the backlog but let's see if it is someone who is not dealing with the backlog and someone who is in the immediate relative category which for example would be right here US citizen filing for a spouse parent or child under 21 like I said the, these uh, categories fall within immediate relative categories so there is no visa backlog that we're dealing with as soon as the case is approved by USCIS the immigrant visa is already available so let's uh, do the same thing we're gonna select Texas Service Center and let's see how long this one will take it's roughly 13 months now you see you're still dealing with uh, some wait time you know it's it's not it's not a short period of time it's it's a little bit over a year and it's just with USAS yes you're not waiting crazy amount of time like you know 10 15 16 years like for example in our previous example but still you're dealing with some administ administrative processing some time that is involved with administrative processing and this is only the first stage at USAS so once your case is approved let's say you are in the immediate relative category once your case is approved by USCIS and depending on which service center you file to the, the you know the time the administrative processing time will be different let's select Nebraska and see how long this, those guys take they take a little bit longer there's a, a month and a half let's check the California service center see how long these guys take also 14 and a half so 
you were waiting for just over a year, immediate relative category. Let's say you're a US citizen now petitioning for your spouse, right? Immediate relative category. You've been waiting over a year. Your case is finally approved by USCIS. You've been waiting for just over a year, a year and you know, two months, two and a half months. Now that your case is approved by USAS, it is transferred to the NVC. And if you're not familiar with all the stages that are involved in the I-130, in the family reunification process, I actually have a video on this channel where I describe each step from the very beginning of, you know, as soon as you start the application and all the way to the interview. And for each step, I do have a separate video on this channel, you know, how to prepare for the interview, how to become documentarily qualified, what is involved in documentarily qualification process. So you can find all of these videos on this channel. And if you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below. And I actually do have uh, uh, goals by volume. I answer uh, the questions in the videos. I go through all of your comments and you can see I have your comments pulled up for today that I will be going through and answering them one by one. Um, and they're in the volumes called answering your comments and common immigration questions. So if you do have a question along the way, don't hesitate to ask. But you're approved by USAS your immigrant visa is already available if you are in the immediate relative category, took about a year, then it is transferred to the NVC, few months before it is transferred from USAS to the NVC. NVC gives you the access to the, to the portal in order to become documentarily qualified. Roughly estimate about six months to become documentarily qualified with a little bit of back and forth if there is anything involved, if they don't like something, if you know. For example, they need a translation for something or maybe as a sponsor, you don't qualify and they need a joint sponsor. You, you need to provide a joint sponsor just, you know, for stuff like this, roughly six months. And then, of course, once you are documentarily qualified, you are waiting for the U.S. Embassy or the field office if the beneficiary is here in the United States to schedule that interview. Again, you are looking roughly about six months. So about a year here six months for NVC, six months for the interview, you are looking roughly at two, two and a half years total for the process for someone who is in immediate relative category that is not dealing with the backlog at all. That's really it. That is your estimation for, you know, if you are in the immediate relative category. Now, we are going back to our... Um, not so immediate relative, unfortunately, in the eyes of Homeland Security, we're going back to everyone who is dealing with the backlog. Let's say you are now approved finally by USCIS and uh, your case is transferred to the NVC. You have received your invoice, you have received your case number, uh, but you cannot you, you can log into the NVC portal, but you cannot start your documentary qualification process because the portal is not fully open yet. How do we estimate how do we find out when the portal is going to be open? Okay, now we're going back to the visa bulletin. Now we're getting into a little bit more detail on the visa bulletin. We're gonna scroll down to the graph B that is available here, right underneath the graph A, which is named Dates for Filing Family Sponsored Visa Applications. So, back to our example now, that is the, um, brother you know where the u.s citizen is filing for for his brother and uh we know that the total process total backlog right now that that u.s citizen will be waiting for and the brother will be waiting for before his immigrant visa is available is roughly 16 years but let's say their case let's say it is already approved and i'm going to select this back to brother sister back to texas just for our example so let's say U.S. citizen was waiting for, after they submitted the I-130, they waited roughly four years, and it was finally approved by USAS, and he received the email saying, that's it, your I-130 was approved by us, we are transferring your case to the NVC. And you received the email from the NVC that they have received the case, you got the case number, you got the invoice number, you go to the portal, and the portal is locked. How do we estimate how long I, until that portal is unlocked? We are looking at the graph B, again, F4, and here is the date, February 2008. So as of right now, in June 2023, people with the priority dates back in February 2008 are finally getting the access to the NVC portal to become 
documentarily qualified. This is what the graph B is showing us, the access, full access to the NVC portal to start the do documentary qualification process. As you can see, there isn't really much difference between the uh, graph A and graph B, uh, roughly about a year between the two. And the reason for that is exactly that, that they open up the NVC portal uh, very, very close to the availability of the immigrant visa. So that once you are documentarily qualified, you can have your you know interview scheduled in the near future so that the documents that you provided during the documentary qualification, you can just bring them to the interview, show them, and that's really it. Now, again, after you're documentarily qualified, there is some time that is involved for all the administrative processing, for scheduling of the interview, for the medical examination. So this is not really the end of the road just yet. There is some time that is involved. And I have seen you know, in, in, in my personal experience, I have seen some of these uh, um, cases take uh, about a year, about a year and a half after becoming documentarily qualified before the interview is scheduled. Uh, but becoming documentarily qualified is a huge milestone. So once you reach that, you know, it's, it's a little bit of, uh, uh, let's just say, bre fresh, um, fresh, breath of fresh air <laughs> because you're, you're you're finally done with the hardest stuff now it's really just you know going for that medical examination and then going and and doing the interview with all of the documents that you have already submitted most of the same documents that you have submitted during the documentary qualification process so hopefully this video was helpful to you in order to uh, estimate the full length of how long your case is going to take, whether you are in immediate relative category, whether you are in one of the, you know, preferences, uh, family preferences that are dealing with the backlog, and then of course estimating each different step uh, in the process. Again, if you do have any questions along the way, if something is unclear in this video, please let me know. I know the stuff is. Uh, um, you know, it takes some time to get used to, but the more you look at it, the more you estimate and, and, and the more you stay on top of it, the easier it becomes and, and, and the easier ways you develop for yourself in order to kind of uh, guide yourself in, you know, in, in the estimation of, of, uh, of these days and, and, and how long these, each of these steps take. So thank you very much for, for, for watching. Uh, appreciate your time as always. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.